this week's midweek message. It is Wednesday, the 7th of June, 2023. As I look around my library, I have shelves of books that speak of the need for the church to do new things in a new way. It's an age-old challenge. Jesus' own ministry was a challenge to those who protected established practices. As Protestants, we, of course, think of the Reformation of the 16th century, but there were many reformers in the centuries preceding the Reformation. It seems always to be a struggle, though, to re-envision, rethink, and live out our faith in new and different ways. Sometimes it's because we've become captive to the ways that we've always done things, and for good reasons. The old ways work. Many Protestants accuse the Catholic Church of being bound by tradition, holding church teaching and tradition on par with the scriptures, although this accusation is quite honestly a bit overwrought. Although we may not be guilty of placing tradition in such a lofty position, we do have entrenched and well-worn traditions that we hold dear, close perhaps to the equal of holy writ. The struggle to figure out the delicate dance of reforming while holding to traditions is challenging. The danger is that beloved ways of doing things can slip over into idolatry. Yaroslav Pelikan, in his book The Vindication of Tradition, writes this. He says, Tradition becomes an idol accordingly when it makes the preservation and the repetition of the past an end in itself. It claims to have the transcendent reality and truth captive and encapsulated in that past, and it requires an idolatrous submission to the authority of tradition, since truth would not dare appear outside it. End quote. In our branch of the Christian tree, the Reformed tradition, the idea of reformation and transformation is at the center of our identity. There is a misquoted phrase often used among Presbyterians that goes like this, that we're reformed and always reforming. The origin of this phrase is actually a bit more robust. The original phrase is, the church is reformed and always in need of being reformed, according to the word of God. It was first said by Jodocus van Lodenstein, a Dutch reformer in 1674, citing the need for God's people to be continually open to the moving of the Holy Spirit and under the guidance of the scriptures. Van Lodenstein did capture the ongoing challenge the church faces in an ever-changing world. So the question for us is this, how do we hold on to tradition while moving hopefully and confidently into the future? I can't give a complete answer here, as if I have one, but in the scripture, we do have a hint on where to begin, with gratitude. Throughout the scripture, both in the Old and New Testaments, gratitude is a posture and an attitude that enables critical engagement with the world. It enables us to look back at God's goodness with thanksgiving and look to the future with hope as people who know and trust the goodness of God that has brought us to this moment and will carry us as we move ahead as disciples of Jesus Christ. Today, I've selected a poem by Jane Kenyon. I selected it because it has a strong sense of nostalgia for church basements and the place that congregational life can play in our civic life. She reminisces about the, quote, wonderful smell of coffee, unquote. I can close my eyes and remember that familiar smell of churches that are such important places to me, and to many of us. The poem is called Potluck at the Wilmot Flat Baptist Church. We drive to the flat on a clear November night. Stars and planets appear in the eastern sky, not yet in the west. Voices rise from the social hall downstairs, the clink of silverware and plates, the smell of coffee. As we walk into the room, faces turn to us, friendly and curious. We are seated at the speaker's table, next to the town historian, a retired school teacher who is lively and precise. The table is decorated with red, white, and blue streamers, and framed Time and Newsweek covers of the president, just elected. Someone has tied peanuts to small branches with red, white, and blue yarn, and set the branches upright in lumps of clay at the center of each table. After the meal, everyone clears food from the tables, and the tables from the hall. Then we go up to the sanctuary where my husband reads poems from the pulpit. One woman looks out the window continually. I notice the altar cloth tasseled and embroidered in gold thread, 
till I come. There was applause after each poem. On the way home, we passed the white clapboard faces of the library and town hall, luminous in the moonlight. And I remember the first time I ever voted in a township hall in Michigan. That same wonderful smell of coffee was in the air, and I found myself among people trying to live ordered lives. And again, I am struck with love for the Republic. Today's prayer is from the Mozarabic Rite, used in Spain and Portugal in the Middle Ages, and this prayer was written prior to 1700. Let us pray. Be thou, O Lord, our protection, who art our redemption. Direct our minds by thy gracious presence, and watch over our paths with guiding love. That among the snares which lie hidden in this path wherein we walk, we may so pass onward with hearts fixed on thee, that by the track of faith we may come to be where thou wouldst have us. Amen. Friends, I hope that you have a great rest of your week. I hope that we see you this weekend in worship. Remember, we worship at 9 o'clock, traditional worship. 1030 is our Southridge service, and I really hope that we'll see you this weekend. All right, have a great rest of your week, everyone. Bye-bye. <music>